I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm happy that you'd spend some of your evening with us. Last week we were introduced to Rowney Higley, wonderful story, and today, tonight, we have her husband, Dennis Higley. Thanks for coming and sharing your story with us. Thank you. And yours is a little different than uh, Rowney's. Yes, it so, is. So uh, tell us a little bit about your Mormon background, actually. <laughs> okay, well, I come from a <clears throat> sixth generation background. Yeah. Uh, the first Higleys joined the Mormon Church in 1830 in upstate New York. Oh, my right goodness. Right when Joseph organized the church. Wow. They were They were right in that vicinity, and so they got hooked into it. <laughs> and with each move of the Mormons, they moved with them. And when they came to the Salt Lake Valley, they ended up settling out in Grantsville. Wow. And then some of their kids migrated on up into Idaho, yeah. and that's where I was born and raised. Uh, up in Idaho. Oh. Southern Idaho. Okay. And so I'm sixth generation on my father's side and five generations on my mother's side. Wow. My great-grandmother walked across the plains with the Mormon pioneers at age eight. Wow. And so you were active all your youth? And all my life. I was active. My dad served for 13 years as ward clerk. Wow. And uh, I was, you know, baptized at eight, ordained a deacon at 12, yeah. well, teacher at 14, on up through the ranks. And yeah. I was 18 when they ordained me an elder, a year before I went on a mission. Wow. Which was a little unusual. But yeah. I was, then through high school, I took four years of seminary instead of the three required. Well, but I was very, you. very active in Mormonism. Never oh. any question that it wasn't nope. true, right? Not at all. Just, yeah. man, I was in the flow and <laughs> going 100 percent. And you ended up getting called on a mission, yep. as we met, or we heard last week. That yeah, you called on a mission to Finland, and back in the old days, it was yeah. two and a half year mission. Yeah, mine was too in yeah. Denmark. Yeah. Yep. So, gave you that extra six months to learn the language. Learn the language. And uh, so, spent two and a half years there in Finland. And uh, that's where Rowney and I got acquainted. Yeah. And she came here uh, while I was still over there. I had about, I came about four months later after she got here. Mm. And uh, we courted, got <laughs> married, and just <laughs> fell right into activity in the ward we were living in. And, and of course, we moved from apartment to apartment. Yeah. And uh, each ward, I was always involved in something in the, <laughs> in the church, yeah. and uh, so elders quorum president, four different times, four different wards, went from being an elders quorum president to the stake high council because they split our stake. Wow! And so I went from elders quorum president to the stake high council, and I was there for four years when everything <laughs> happened in our <laughs> life that uh, Rowney talked about last week, and. Yeah. We started investigating the church. Well, now, she came to you, apparently, after she had been 14 years working for the church and translating and everything and found some discrepancies or some contradictions in doctrine and stuff. And 
What did you think when she started sharing this? Well, it, it's kind of uh, uh, shocking to me. There was, uh, but I got to back up a little bit because we were given an, as stake high councilman, we were assigned to speak once a month in one sure. of the wards in the sure. stake, and uh, one of the topics was on marriage because a lot of the kids weren't getting married in the temple anymore and so uh -huh. the stake president wanted that emphasized and one of the older high councilmen said there's a good book written on temple marriage and it's the seer by orson pratt so i ordered the book and gleaned what i needed out of it yeah and uh, gave it to rowney because she was very ill at the time and bedridden and so i'd come home and she had been reading this book and she had she hadn't read it either in her uh, you know, studies yeah. and as her translation work. And so <laughs> I'd come home and she'd say, well, did you know this? And I'd read it and I'd say, no. And every night I was faced with all these underlined and corners folded over. And Here's what so, I found today. <laughs> yeah. So I just finally took the book away from her and put it on the bookshelf and says, you know, we'll understand all this later. Yeah. You know, that's a typical, typical Mormon answer. reaction. You know, put it yeah. on the shelf and yeah. just go about your life. Yeah. Well, and then we sold that home that we were living in and moved into, into town in Vernal. And she saw that as the perfect opportunity not to go to church anymore. Because uh, you'd moved and, out of that ward. Yeah, we'd moved out yeah. of that ward. We are moving into a new ward, and nobody knew who she was, you know, other than through the business aspect. So she was just going to kind of blend into the background and not be active anymore. Now, was she miserable? It, it, we didn't really talk about this last week. Was this tough for her to to also come to grips with what she had been learning about the church? Very, very tough. I'm sure it was upsetting to you. Very upsetting to me, but it was hard for her because yeah. she'd given her life to the church. Oh, sure. You know, from uh, when she joined, she'd just been just full-fledged Mormon and given, you know, work for the church for over 14 years. Yeah. And so it was really hard for her to back up and look at um, outside the fishbowl and yeah. say, hey, there's something really wrong with this. And so she said, you know, she wasn't going to go to church anymore, and that really upset me, you know. Here I was just <laughs> off of the stake high council, and uh, I said, well, what's wrong? And she said, it's Mormonism. You know, I can't do it. I can't not do this anymore. And uh, she said, there's some things you've got to see. And I said, okay, we'll check into it. I'll show you that the Mormon church is true. So... She said, well, there's a few books that we don't have that you really need to see. And I said, okay, order them from the local Mormon bookstore, and uh, I'll show you. Was and this anti-Mormon stuff? No, this was all Mormon all stuff. All Mormon literature. Yeah, stuff that she had seen during her translation kind years. Kind like the seer. <laughs> yeah, that was like that. And so I come home for lunch, and uh, she said, well, I called the bookstore and ordered some books, and they've, they're holding them down there for you. So I got back in my truck, went down to the bookstore, and holy cow, <laughs> she'd ordered a lot of books. <laughs> Good reader, huh? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the cost of them was yeah. enormous. <laughs> yeah. But I thought, well, it's going to be worth it, because I can sure, you know. Prove the church is true. Right. Sure. So I brought them home and plopped them down on the kitchen counter, and I says, there you are. Go to it. And she says, no, you, you said you were going to sit down with me. Uh, and I said, yeah, she I was. Challenged you, she huh? challenged me. So Tuesday night when I got home from work, we ate supper. And then on our dining room table, she had all of these books laid out. <laughs> on the, and she had had all kinds of information, you know, notes and everything from her time period of going through a lot of these books that she had. So... We sat down, she was on one side of the table, I was on the other side, and we went from book to book, volume to volume, uh, you know, back and forth, from topic to topic. Yeah. We started about 7 o'clock that night, and uh, at 2.30 in the morning I stood up and slammed them all shut, and I said, that's enough. Somebody's been lying to me for all of these years. Oh, it was very apparent that there was a concocted, plan to de deceive people yeah. by not telling them the whole truth about the church. So 
Shocking, thought, isn't it? It really yeah. is. And Just so I thought right there, okay, now I owe it to myself to really study these things out and find out what the real Mormon church is about, what real Mormon doctrine is all about. And so we started in studying every night. We were in, had our noses in the books. and Things come, you'd never heard before, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come Sunday, uh, I had a problem because I was teaching a Sunday school class, and <laughs> here I was knew all of this stuff that it was wrong now, and so I walked over and to the ward house and gave my lesson manual to the Sunday school superintendent and said I'll never be back, oh and I never went back. But that started us on an odyssey that we just dug and dug and dug. The more we read and studied, the more we found was false. Yeah, and this prior to me sitting down with Rowney and she had been sharing with me some of these things and it brought our marriage to the brink of divorce so because you were still feeling was, like the church was true I was and digging she knew my, it wasn't yeah. right I was digging my heels in and she was saying no you just don't know so once I stood up that night from the table and said okay we've got to start studying then you know, that's when I opened my mind enough to really look at it objectively. Wow. And so we went for the next year. We just studied and studied and studied. And so we decided we've got to separate ourselves from this organization. Well, back in the old days, as Well, they I know said, this was like 32 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no support, really, no. was there? No, we were all alone. I mean, the Tanners might have been the around. The Tanners were around. Marv, we we, Cowan, mm -hmm. just, we didn't know who Marv was yeah. at the time, but Tanners we had heard about. And uh, so we wrote a letter uh, requesting our names to be removed from the records of the church. Well, back then you couldn't do that. Oh. You, you had to go through an excommunication court. Oh. And so, and being on the stake high council, I knew what an excommunication court was like because I had sat sure, in on them sure. and excommunicated people from the church. Oh boy. And I thought, well, it won't be that bad for us because here I've been a high councilman. Uh, I'm a businessman in town here. The other high councilmen are business owners also. So And they've known you for these known, many years. Oh, yeah. For all these years, they've known me. They knew my reputation. That you had a little integrity and mm -hmm. a good character. And, and I was on a member of the Chamber of Commerce. You know, I, oh I just goodness. had, you know, everything, all pluses on my side yeah. of the ledger. And uh, I thought it won't be bad for us. Well, they sent the letter back and said that we're going to, you're going to have to go through an excommunication court. And we said, we won't attend. But you, being a bishop, if you've ever had anybody excommunicated from your ward, yeah. know that part of that excommunication back then was you stood up and you read a letter from the stake president yeah. see, that so-and-so and so-and-so had been excommunicated from the church, no yeah. reason given, and then... Usually uh, we dismiss the Aaronic priesthood. Right, to exactly. The, to the mm -hmm. priesthood, yep. yeah. Well, that just launches all kinds of rumors in the ward as to why Dennis and Rowney and their girls were excommunicated from the church. By Monday morning, I had committed adultery. That's why we were excommunicated. That was for the, it, it can't be the church. Or no. It can't be the doctrine. Mm -hmm. It's, it's got to be you. It's got to be the person. Character assassination. By the, yeah. <laughs> By the end of the week, not only had I committed adultery, but I had become a polygamist. Oh. And then within two weeks of that, one, one fellow that I went home teaching to was spreading the rumor that I had six and possibly even seven wives, and he knew that for a fact. Oh my and I goodness. Go, what in the world? So that's when we decided, okay, we've got to tell the truth to anybody that asks us why we left the church. It was doctrinal. Nothing that I had done personally. Yeah. I hadn't sinned. Right. We had just studied from the church's own books yeah. and come to the conclusion that it was wrong. It sounds so familiar. Mm -hmm. And did you did it affect your business at all? Very, very much. Oh, okay. um, they uh, it, they disliked us so much from talking to other active members of the church that in the fall of that year in state conference in one of the stakes, there were three stakes there at the time, um, in one of the stakes, the one that we were living in, 
the stake president announced a boycott. He says, don't do business with Higley's. They're a bad influence in our community. The stake president said they, that in they state announced, conference? They announced it in state conference. So that killed our businesses. People just quit doing business with us. Oh. And so for the next two years, we just declined. Uh, you know, we struggled to stay in business, but we couldn't. We lost everything. We lost our home, of course, our businesses, and uh, we ended up moving out of town. Friends helped us move in a horse trailer that we had to clean the manure out of to get <laughs> before to we could move. have a place to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, don't you have that perspective that here you are closer to God than ever before mm -hmm. and closer to Christ and know more truth, you mm -hmm. feel, and you certainly know the truth about Mormonism, and yet you have all these rumors about you. Yeah, and that was right at the time that Linda, that Rowney spoke about oh, last yeah. week, uh -huh. brought the tapes to us. So as we were going down, oh, we Chuck were getting James. into the Bible study. Yeah. And we changed all of our studies from, we knew Mormonism was absolutely 100% false, so let's give the Bible a chance, and we got into the Bible study, and through our study of the Bible for the next year and a half, we didn't go to church. We just had a Bible study every Sunday and in the evening or individually we'd have it. But every Sunday with our daughters, we held a Bible study out on the patio or in the house, or, you know, when yeah. the weather was bad. And during the winter, we'd, of course, it inside. But uh, we, that's what we did for the next year and a half is have a Bible study. And we studied ourselves out of Mormonism I went into nothingism, then I went into Christianity. We studied ourselves into Christianity, and through our study of the book of John, we came to know the Lord as our personal Lord and Savior. Oh. And then through the book of Hebrews, uh, we came to realize that we've got to be fellowshipping with like believers. Yeah. And <clears throat> so that's when we started church shopping, <laughs> and uh, we visited several of the Christian churches there in the valley and ended up at a first uh, Southern Baptist church there. Wow. And so as we were going out of business materially, God was letting everything materially be taken away from us because in Mormonism, the, the richer you are, the more God is blessing you. Yeah, the more God-like I mean, you yeah, are. Yeah. 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 And so that's why we, you know, we went down on the physical side, the material side, but the spiritual side, we were climbing with yeah. our, in our faith, and God just used, used our faithfulness. We just put everything in God's lap. Well, I'm proud of you for making that transition, because there are some, as you probably know, people that leave the church, r realize mm -hmm. the church isn't true, and they just give up on yeah. God, and you were able to make yeah. that transition. What do you attribute yeah. that to? Just to... Well, a I, hope in Christianity and well, I think uh, study, of course. Study, yeah. study is the main thing. You've got to study the Bible, not just read the Bible. It, it's like you know, in Mormonism, they say, okay, your scripture reading is this, yeah, and so you read that, and that's it. You have no background uh, as to why that said or what the circumstances were. No real like, study. No. no real study. Yeah, but with these tape studies, it was phenomenal. We learned the background, the, the, the Jewish background, the Jewishness of the Bible, uh, why they said the things they said, yeah. why the, the Christ's apostles taught uh, the things that they did to this particular group of people and so forth. And so it just opens up a whole new world. And uh, you just have to rely on God and He just helps you grow. The more you read His, his word, word, yeah, the more He opens your eyes and to trust His. trust the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't, isn't that a disservice Joseph Smith did with that eighth article of faith? Yeah. Telling oh, us that... Uh, it's a horrible thing he did with that. Yeah, because it is so trustworthy and the Dead Sea yep. Scrolls now prove that and, yep. and all the manuscripts that support it. Yeah. Well, so, and I know you read a book by Floyd... Floyd McKelvin. McKelvin. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of a turning point for you too, yeah, wasn't it? It was Mormon Illusion was the book. Uh, we had been reading all of these uh, things on Mormonism, and now we were researching into Christianity, 
uh, getting uh, books by Christian authors that would help us understand Christian doctrines better. And a friend gave us this book uh, from Mo uh, called Mormon Illusion by Floyd McKelvine. And uh, I read that and uh, I thought, here I am. I've just abandoned, you know, a belief system that I had believed in for 40 years. Oh. And I've been nothing. I know that Mormonism is wrong. I'm just getting into the Bible. And I can see the truth is there. And at the end of that book, uh, Floyd tells you how to accept the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. So I got down on my face on the floor in our basement that uh, so it was an early Sunday morning. I don't know what day it was. All I can remember it was Sunday morning and everybody upstairs was asleep. Yeah. And, and I repented of my false worship because I'd been worshiping a false god, yeah. the god of Mormonism, yeah. and except asked the, the true god of the Bible to come into my life and lead me from now on. And he did. I mean, from then on, I mean, in our Bible studies, it was amazing uh, how your mind is opened to the Word of God when you ask Him to help you understand His Word. And you're teachable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so teachable. Yeah. I, I remember, you know, Rowney listened to those. She mentioned those uh, three John study tapes that Linda gave us at first, and she wanted me to listen to them. And I said, nope. No. <laughs> Once burned, twice smart. You know, yeah. I'm not getting involved with religion. Anything else. Yeah. <laughs> religion. That's the word I used. I'm not getting involved with religion. But, you know, so I finally relented one, one Sunday morning and sat down and listened to that first tape. And like she mentioned, it was their 90-minute tapes. 45 minutes he spends on John 1-1. One, one. Where in any... Mormon, so Mormon yeah. Sunday school class, do they spend that much time on one verse? Yeah. And it just opened a whole new world to me. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. In, in God's Word. It was just absolutely incredible. Well, Rowney must have been thrilled when you finally came to her and said, all right, mm -hmm. my eyes are open. Mm -hmm. I'm now no longer blind. Yeah. What'd she say? Well, she was elated. And yeah. that's when, after I listened to those, I listened to the first tape. And then yeah. the second, then the third, and I told her, look, dear, we've got to have a Bible study with our girls from now on. And you've got the three girls. we got the, the two of them were at home. The oldest one has already moved out, and yeah. she was married. And uh, so the two younger ones, we had a Bible study every Sunday morning with them. Wow. And uh, they just grew in the Lord. It was just, it was amazing. And all three are Christian. Yeah, all three point. are Christians now. Isn't that a joy? Yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah, what a blessing. Yeah. And the freedom that you feel. Oh, The incredible. trust in God yep. and the grace that we didn't understand as Mormons, right? Yeah, exactly. And I th think, you know, our experience is such that, you know, we lost everything materially. Yeah. We had to rely 100% on God. We've always had a place to live. Yeah. We've always had food on the table. Yeah. And he has taken care of everything. It's not way in advance. Sometimes it's the day of, <laughs> you know, that we, we just relied on God. And well, we, we still do. Uh, I'm just so proud of you. And, and I, I think the, uh, the fact that our stories relate so much with each other mm -hmm. is, is just amazing. And I appreciate that. And you've done so much. The, his men... H-I-S-M-I-N dot yeah. com. I think mm -hmm. that's probably shown on the screen here tonight. And you've, you've taught these classes now, and, and you modified them a little bit when you went around the country, right? Yes. Uh, we have to, uh, there are time constraints that yeah. we have to deal with, sure. and groups constraints, and sometimes we have to condense a lot into a very short yeah. period. And but. You know, we're always available on the internet, and a lot of the people contact us afterwards. Yeah. You know, for additional information. And you're and you're doing it again eventually, or in with Sept a Calvary Chapel? In, yes, Calvary Chapel here in Salt Lake the in one September. The on 4500 yeah, South. Yeah, 4500 uh, South off and the Fourth. Freeway. Yeah, and uh, we'll start it in September. Yeah. And it, it'll run for 10 to 12 weeks, depending on the size of the class and.
And it goes through, and the first thing Roundy mentioned is who God is. Is that yep. the first one? And That's then it goes through. We go more? through the foundational things that people have to know about Mormonism, and even for their own belief, whatever it may be, you've got to know who God is, who Jesus is, and how to be saved. What salvation okay. is, what it means, and how to be saved. Wow. So those are the first three, and then we go into. Other the background so. of Mormonism and so forth. Wow. Well, but Dennis, we, oh, we, let me yeah, say, ahead. we compare all of the Mormon doctrines with biblical doctrines. So they get Bible scriptures yeah. to show where Mormonism is wrong. Yeah, and it's not anti stuff. No. It's just right out of their it's, own It's material. their own stuff. Yeah. Well, you've got just a minute or so. Would you care to share a thought or two to the people that might be listening, what well, would you say to them? Uh, I would encourage any Mormon that's listening to study your Bible, not read it, study it. You yeah. Go to a Christian bookstore and buy a commentary or Strong's Concordance and really look at the Bible yeah. because it is 100% God's Word. And we just printed our new cards Oh. Uh, and on the back, we've put a little saying, one of the class members came up with this. Yeah, and it. this, I'd like to close with this. Would you rather know now or after you die that the truth you were told was really a lie? <laughs> That's good. So, you know, it's everybody has an obligation to find the truth. Well, so. yeah, and, and it is there to be looked at, but mm -hmm. we carry that Bible to church. I carried it for 64 yeah. years, and I never looked at it. I didn't yeah. know what it said. Carla and I sat down at the table. We, we started reading John, mm -hmm. starting with John. We started crying. Yeah. Things that we had never seen before. Yeah. Scriptures that meant so much, yeah. mean so much to us now, we just never understood. Yeah, and that John study that we went through initially then I've gone through it at least six times since then, and every Still time more out. learn something out of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's incredible. God's Word's incredible. Well, I appreciate all that you do. You, you have a wonderful ministry, and I hope people will go to your website and check things out. You'll learn more about the Higleys and about their, what they have, some of their resources, and they have a newsletter yeah. that they put out every month, mm -hmm. and, and it's really wonderful and uplifting. And, so praise we're, God. We're here to help any Mormon that wants to look into it. All right. Thanks, Dennis. I appreciate it. And remember, sure. you are following the gospel of Joseph Smith. It's an add-on gospel. Good night.